On the roof of the world, nestled within the colossal peaks of the Himalayas, a project of almost unimaginable scale is taking shape. China is planning to build what might be the most audacious and complex superdam in human history. This isn't just another large-scale construction. It's the biggest hydroelectric project ever conceived. A plan so ambitious it borders on the insane. The potential payoff? Enough clean electricity to power a major European nation, like the United Kingdom, for an entire year. But the price of that power could be catastrophic. The chosen location is one of the most inaccessible and treacherous gorges in Tibet, a place where the Earth itself is unstable. A project of this magnitude has the power to redraw the geopolitical map of South Asia, granting one nation unprecedented control over the lifeblood of its neighbors. That is, if the earthquakes don't shatter the entire dream first. This is the story of China's plan to tame a titan, to harness the raw power of a sacred river, and build the world's most powerful dam. For the last 70 years, China has embarked on an engineering odyssey, consistently shattering records in nearly every field. They have a history of thinking bigger, building faster, and pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And when it comes to hydropower, they are in a league of their own. Some reports suggest China has constructed a staggering 87,000 dams. For a nation of 1.4 billion people, managing water isn't just an option. It's a matter of national survival. They've rerouted entire rivers in colossal projects to fuel their rapid development. But everything they have built to date, even the world-famous Three Gorges Dam, will seem small in comparison to what they are planning next. The sheer audacity of this new project is breathtaking. Early proposals were so extreme that one even suggested using a tactical nuclear device to blast open the landscape. Thankfully, that idea was rejected, but it reveals the scale of the challenge. We are talking about the single greatest concentration of hydroelectric potential on the planet, locked away in a location so difficult to reach, it's a modern day fortress of nature. The river at the heart of this plan is the mighty Yarlung Tsangpo, the upper reaches of the river known downstream as the Brahmaputra. This is where China intends to construct a 60 gigawatt superdam, an energy titan capable of producing three times more electricity than the current largest dam in the world. If they succeed, it would be an unparalleled triumph of engineering, a monument to human ingenuity. It would harness the untamed force of one of Asia's greatest rivers, providing clean electricity for tens of millions of people. But the location itself presents a monumental challenge. The dam is slated for a remote and wild part of China, rarely seen by outsiders, a land of towering mountains prone to violent natural disasters. Just getting the necessary construction materials to the site would be a logistical nightmare worthy of its own epic story. And the implications ripple far beyond China's borders. Downstream, the nations of India and Bangladesh, who share this very river, are watching with deep anxiety. They fear a project this large could choke their access to water, a fear amplified by the growing uncertainties of climate change and unpredictable river flows. Given these colossal obstacles, why would China even consider such a gamble? The answer is simple an insatiable demand for electricity. China consumes twice as much electricity as the United States and eight times as much as Russia. Historically, this thirst has been quenched by burning coal, the dirtiest of fossil fuels. But as China pivots towards its goal of carbon neutrality and its energy demand continues to soar, the nation is in a frantic race to develop renewable energy. They are investing billions in solar, wind and tidal power but the crown jewel of their green energy strategy has always been hydropower. After damming most of their internal rivers, their gaze has now turned to the great international rivers that originate within their borders. And this is where their geographic advantage becomes a source of immense power. It all begins here, the Tibetan Plateau. With an average elevation of over 4,500 meters, it is a vast high altitude desert that looms over the rest of Asia covering an area five times the size of France. This extreme altitude has earned it the nickname the Earth's third pole, home to a massive concentration of glaciers and ice. 
As this ice melts, it gives birth to Asia's most vital rivers, the Indus, the Ganges, the Mekong, and the Yarlung Tsangpo. The plateau is so crucial to the continent's water supply that it's also called the Water Tower of Asia. Ancient myths even described a single mountain in Western Tibet as the center of the universe, with four sacred rivers flowing from it to nourish the world. These rivers aren't just waterways. They are the lifeblood of the largest agricultural regions in Pakistan, India, Southeast Asia, and China. To control the Tibetan plateau is to hold the key to the water supply for nearly half the world's population. For China, these rivers represent not only a massive source of clean energy, but also a powerful tool of geopolitical influence over their downstream neighbors. And the river they've targeted is the most powerful of them all, the Yarlung Tsangpo. Depending on where you are, it's also known as the Siang or the Brahmaputra. But because of its violent rapids and dramatic waterfalls, many simply call it the Everest of Rivers. It begins its journey at the Angsi Glacier, flowing east for over a thousand kilometers, before it collides with the towering Namcha Barwa mountain. Here, it makes an abrupt, dramatic turn south, crashing down into India and Bangladesh before, finally merging with the Indian Ocean. This river is a natural wonder. It's the highest major river in the world, and at nearly 3,000 kilometers, it's one of the longest. To this day, no one is known to have successfully navigated its entire length. It's easy to understand why. The region where the dam is planned is incredibly isolated, right on the doorstep of the contested border with India. It's a land that has guarded its secrets for centuries. The exact location China is targeting is a place called the Yarlung, Tsangpo Gorge, a site held sacred in Tibetan Buddhism, which is even believed to house a hidden gateway to the spirit world. For local cultures, the river is not just a body of water. It's an embodied goddess, her form curving with the river's bends. But Beijing is not interested in its spiritual power. They are interested in its geography, a unique geological feature. That makes it the perfect site for a hydroelectric mega project. As the river carves its way through the gorge, it descends with breathtaking speed. In a massive arc around the 7,700 meter tall Namcha Barwa mountain, a feature known as the Great Bend, the river plummets more than 2,000 meters in altitude. To put that into perspective, the Grand Canyon is just over 1,800 meters at its deepest point. The Yarlung Tsangpo Gorge is nearly three times deeper from the riverbed to the mountain peaks. It is one of the steepest, most violent descents of any major river on the planet. This raw, untamed power is a giant natural wonder, buried deep in one of the world's most remote places. The region is so untouched that scientists are still discovering new species here every year, including mammals never before seen by humans, captured only by remote camera traps. It is a biological treasure chest. And this is where China plans to build its super dam. Before we dive into the mind-bending specifics of how they plan to achieve this, if you find stories of colossal engineering and high-stakes geopolitics as fascinating as we do, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. You'll be the first to know when we release new deep dives into the projects that are shaping our world. Your support allows us to create more content just like this. Thank you. Now back to the challenge. The area is so remote that a reliable year-round road didn't even exist here until 2013. But the hydroelectric potential is simply too vast for the Chinese government to ignore. While several smaller dams already exist further upstream on the Yarlung Tsangpo, they are nothing compared to the 60 gigawatt beast being planned. Official details are scarce, either because the final plan is still being debated, or because Beijing prefers to keep its cards close to its chest. But experts believe there are two main ways this could be done. The first option is to build a cascade of several large dams down through the Great Gorge. This would be enormously destructive, flooding a unique biodiverse ecosystem and likely destroying it forever. The second and more likely option is far more surgically precise and technologically audacious. It involves digging a massive tunnel. In this scenario, they would employ what's known as a run of the river system. 
Instead of building a colossal wall to create a massive reservoir, you simply divert the river's flow. The plan would be to bore a tunnel straight through the base of the Namcha Barwa mountain, effectively cutting across the Great Bend. Water would be diverted into the tunnel at a high elevation and then plummet thousands of meters through the mountain, passing through a power station at the other end before rejoining the river downstream. The sheer scale of this tunnel is difficult to comprehend. Based on geographical maps, the shortest possible route would be around 40 to 50 kilometers long, roughly the same length as the channel tunnel that connects the UK and France. And it wouldn't be just one power station. Some reports suggest a series of nine separate hydroelectric facilities would be built in a chain at the tunnel's exit, with water passing from one to the next, generating electricity at each stage. Experts estimate a tunnel like this could channel 2,000 cubic meters of water every single second, allowing the project to generate up to 300 billion kilowatt hours of clean electricity per year. That's three times the output of the Three Gorges. Damn. Yet, paradoxically, in terms of visible concrete and steel, this superdam would look much smaller. The mega in this project isn't the structure itself. It's the ingenious way it would exploit the raw power that nature has already created. The gorge itself is the real mega project. But this surgical approach does not make the project any less dangerous. In fact, many experts have called this the riskiest, most complex and most expensive river project ever attempted. The danger isn't just in the remoteness, it's in the very ground itself. The Yarlung Sangpo Gorge sits directly on top of the Indo Sangpo Sutcher Zone. This is a major geological fault line, the scar left from the collision of the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates 50 million years ago. These plates are still grinding against each other, making this one of the most seismically active regions on Earth. In 1950, the area was rocked by an 8.6 magnitude earthquake, one of the most powerful ever recorded. It killed hundreds in a sparsely populated region and triggered massive landslides that blocked the Yarlung Changpo River for eight days. When this natural dam finally burst, it unleashed a seven meter high wall of water that thundered downstream, killing over 500 more people. And this was not a one-off event. The region is constantly trembling. It's not a matter of if another major earthquake will strike, but when. If such an earthquake hits after this super dam is built, the downstream consequences would be apocalyptic. Landslides are another constant threat. In the last two decades, the river has been blocked multiple times by natural debris. A recent glacier collapse sent an avalanche of ice and rock four kilometers down into the river, creating a dam that was visible from space. If a tiny, naturally formed dam can do that, imagine the devastation if a man-made structure of this magnitude were to fail, especially one located so close to an international border. It wouldn't just be a domestic tragedy, it would be a geopolitical catastrophe involving two nuclear-armed neighbors. And this brings us to the human cost. People often think of dams as simply holding back water, but they also hold back sediment, the rich, fertile silt that is carried down from the mountains. The entire nation of Bangladesh and the fertile plains of Assam in India were formed by this very sediment deposited over millennia. It's the natural fertilizer that has sustained agriculture in the region for centuries. If the dam traps this, sediment, the farmlands downstream, will slowly lose their fertility. This could trigger a food security crisis for millions. For the farmers in India and Bangladesh, the dam represents a terrifying new uncertainty. Climate change is already making their lives difficult, but a foreign power holding a hand on their water supply is a far more direct threat. To counter this, India has announced plans for its own large dam on the river, a 10 gigawatt project designed to store water and regulate flow on its side of the border. This may protect India's interests, but it could make the situation even worse for Bangladesh, the nation at the very end of the line. This is the new front line of 21st century geopolitics, water. When one country controls the flow of a river, it holds immense power over its neighbors water can become a strategic weapon. For China and India, two regional superpowers with a history of border disputes and fierce competition, 
This dam adds a dangerous new dimension to their already tense relationship. While there is no official confirmation of a construction start date or a final price tag, the signs are clear that Beijing is serious. The project was explicitly mentioned in China's FAO, National Five-Year Plan, a document that outlines the country's highest priorities. The chairman of Power China, the state-owned company reportedly in charge, has publicly discussed the project's immense power output and its role in meeting China's climate goals. The future of this dam is one of the biggest questions hanging over Asia. China has a right to pursue clean energy, but its neighbors have a right to the river that has sustained them for generations. It is a monumental clash of needs and fears, set against a backdrop of immense geological and political risk. China is known for achieving what other nations deem impossible. If any country can pull this off, it's probably them. The only question is, what will be the true cost? Will this be the crowning achievement of a new global superpower, a beacon of green energy? Or will it be a monument to hubris, a gamble that unleashes forces, both natural and political, that no one can control? The world is watching.